for stopping by the Alabama Woodsman, a channel of satire, comedy, and entertainment. A channel of me just basically calling it the way I see it. Now, if you like what you hear and see, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Also, be sure to share the video. And if you don't like what you see, tell me in the comments down below what you didn't like, and maybe I'll take that comment and make a funny video about what you said. All right, folks, we're here again. It's Kent Christmas 2020 Prophecy. We are in September of 2021, so these prophecies should have already come to pass. Uh, he didn't do a 2019. I looked and looked, and in this video, he tells you God didn't give him anything to do in 2019. Uh, but anyway, here it is. Kent Christmas 2020 Prophecy. See a donate button. Giving online at The Rock Church has never been one people serving one God with one vision. He's been coming for 22 years. Let's welcome Pastor Kent Christmas to Rock Church. Come on. Why don't you all stand tonight and remain standing. Um, I need the word of the Lord to be anointed tonight as I release it. So this statement perplexes me. I, I call this false prophet speak. He supposedly has a prophecy from the Lord. He's going to release it, but then he says, well, I need the Lord to anoint it. Um, if it's a word from God and you're giving it to the church for edification, do you think it is not anointed? This is, this is just false prophet speak is all this is. Why don't you raise your hands to the Lord. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to tune us in to the frequency that you speak on. Okay, so we're just a few seconds into the video. Folks, whenever you hear about getting tuned in to the frequency that God is on, this is Eastern mysticism. This is what, this is what Hindus do. When you, when you hear uh, the Tibetans or, or the Hindus or whoever who does, Om, Om, they're trying to create a harmonic frequency in order to communicate with the God they're trying to reach. Here is a Christian who says we need to get into the frequency of what God, of how God speaks. Are you serious? This right here is NAR, New Age, gobbledygook. That's what this is. If you understand what you're hearing, you will see this. Don't trust me on this whole frequency thing. You look it up yourself. That's what it's all about. Try to get, you know how they, they do the, uh, the, the brass bowls? They, they ding them and they, they, they run around the rim to try to create a harmonic frequency. They're trying to get the same frequency Shiva talks on or whatever God they're trying to reach. This is, this is Eastern mysticism. He has just now amalgamated into the holy Christian religion. Shameful. God, this word that you've put in my spirit, I pray, God, that you would transfer it not only into this building, but Lord, around this nation. God, I am encouraged that you again remind us that you're sovereign. So, Lord, God, in obedience to you, God, we release the word of the Lord tonight to the remnant. More false prophet speak right here, folks. To say that he is going to release this word to the remnant. See, everybody wants to be the remnant. That means the true ones who are left in the faith. The ones who have stuck who have been who have been holy and and just this little bitty crowd right here god that remains that all this is is he is pumping up the crowd that's all this is and i thank you lord that you've gone before us and prepared the way In the name of jesus we pray amen god bless you be seated i am extremely jealous of the lord so I make no apology tonight for what I'm fixing to release to you by the Spirit. I am committed to protecting the gospel of Jesus Christ. You will never wonder where I stand, but I stand on the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord is not... <clears throat> convoluted. Um, two years ago when we came on a watch night service, we released a prophetic word of the Lord to the church. 
and that so-called prophecy was a disaster. If you've not heard my uh, reaction to his 2018 so-called prophecy, be sure to go back and listen to that. He, he, is, he is trying to act like he has a foundation of a, of a prophet, and that was just a disaster, folks. I, there were so many holes in that prophecy, it was almost embarrassing for me to comment on it. Last year I came, I know some of you were disappointed, but I did not have anything because God was not speaking. As if to say, if God was speaking, I would have got a prophecy for you. But God wasn't speaking, so that's why I didn't bring you anything. This is getting close to being cultish. In the last few weeks, the Lord has been speaking to my spirit what I feel like God is saying for the church in this hour, and I have been transcribing it in my prayer. Folks, he just said that he felt like this is what the Lord was trying to say to the church, and he transcribed it into his prayer. He is trying to speak a prayer into existence. That is not what prophecy is. He's trying to speak something into existence, which is NAR theology, through a prayer. I have written it down. Uh, I'm going to release it to you tonight. Um, and I believe it's what God <clears throat> wants to say to us in the spirit. I'm going to read it to you because God gave me so much. I don't know any other way to release it and to be accurate with it than to tell you what I, God is saying by writing it down. This is the time of the remnant, says the Lord. In 2020, I am opening heaven for my saints who have been faithful, and I am opening it with the reign of favor. As Elijah was on his knees till the cloud came, so has the remnant been in intercession. But no longer will intercession come out of your mouth but the shout of victory and triumph. The favor that I am releasing on the remnant in the next four years is coming from the secular realm and not from inside the church. He just said that the favor he is releasing is coming from worldly people and not from church-going people. So let me get this straight. God is not going to give the favor from church-going people who are on the road to purifying their robes and being sanctified and in personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. He is going to go to people who are fornicators, liars, murderers, sinners who don't have a relationship with God, who are on their way to hell, that's where the favor's coming from. Are you serious? This year I am lifting off the remnant, the spirit of heaviness, and I am clothing you with the garments of praise, says the Lord. When I am done blessing my faithful people, the world will envy them for the blessing that they walk under. The blessing that they walk under in 2020. So if I was a sinner, and 2020 we saw roughly 720,000 people die from COVID, a terrible way to die. If I was a sinner, I would be saying, hey, Christian, where's your God? You got the sinners dying of COVID, and you got the Christians dying of COVID. Where is your God, and why is he not making a difference? That's who the sinner is supposed to envy? They're supposed to envy the blessed Christian who also was devastated by COVID? This doesn't make sense. I know how difficult it has been for the remnant to hold on to your faith the last few years, especially watching the lukewarm and the counterfeit prosper without paying the price of living by faith and sacrifice. See, folks, most of the people, if not all the people, in the pews don't see themselves as lukewarm. Because everyone sees other people's sin as bigger than theirs. See, I have little sins. Everyone else has bigger sins. I'm okay. They're not okay. That's, that's this whole thing about uh, the lukewarm. You know, He was on the lukewarm, which I thought God did away with in 2018 in a previous video. I mean, he said, God said was he was getting rid of the lukewarm. But yet here we are in 2020, the lukewarm are back. Questions, questions, questions. 
But know this, says the Lord of hosts, what I am now releasing in the earth is going to be so glorious, both spiritually and in the natural realm, that you will forget the pain and suffering that you have endured. When you leave this earth, you're going to leave in victory and not in defeat. 2019 was a year of shedding things in the body of Christ. Heaviness, discouragement, debt, all kinds of things, says the Lord. It was a year of exchange. The first are now going to become last, and the last are now going to become first. For all my children who have sowed in tears for many years, get ready, I am drying your eyes, and now you shall reap in joy. This year, 2020, is the beginning of a last transfer of wealth in the earth. This final move of my presence in glory is not a revival for the church, for revival is for the lukewarm. This final harvest and this harvest is only for the lost. Now keep in mind, he's about to talk about the lost. This harvest is for a generation that did not reject me, did not see what they wanted, but rejected the counterfeit church. So I had to listen to it a couple times. What he said was, that is the generation that they're lost, okay? But it's not because they rejected God, it's But that doesn't mean anything because they're still lost. And if you can reject God, you could also turn around and accept God. Can you not? This, this is very confusing. The church that's going to bring in the last harvest will not look like the church of past generation. Your pews are going to have men and women on them with dyed hair and mohawks and tattoos. and generational piercings but they will be changed and washed by the blood of the lamb and will give me the glory that i have so longed for in this hour okay remember in one of my other videos i told you that if i tell you that the chair is red i've told you two things it's a chair and it's red but i've told you so much more i told you that it's not a car it's not a dog it's not a trumpet it's not blue green white or yellow I've told you so much more by not saying it. Well, what he just said that the Lord said that they will give him the love he's longed for in this hour. What about the love I gave the Lord? Is it, did, I, did I miss the mark? Was my love not good enough? What about your love? Was your love not good enough? Because God was longing for the love and these are the people that are going to give it to him. They're going to be changed, which, yeah, God could change them. But his statement about they're going to give me the love I've longed for, what about the rest of us? What about our love that we've been giving to God? This is where he messes up because this is not a message from God. This harvest will primarily be a generation of younger men and women who have never felt the real presence of their creator. They're going to be led by a group of men and women who have a Joshua and Caleb spirit. All right, let's get something straight. Not everything is a spirit. In other words, there's not a spirit of slothfulness, um, a spirit of hyperactivity, or a spirit of OCD, or anything like that, okay? There's only so many spirits that are listed in the Bible. And, and there's, there's not like, like I hear people say, oh, well, you know, she's, she's got that Jezebel spirit. No, Jezebel's spirit is where it is, all right? She can't be in two places at one time. So to say that these people will have the Caleb and Joshua spirit, I, I, I don't like those terms, I think this is more NAR talk, and I've heard it back during the Assemblies of God in the 80s and stuff. Um, it's just a misuse of, of scriptures, and it's something that we really need to get away from. Who have had to live in the wilderness for years with the lukewarm and the unbelieving and the rebellious. 
but they did not become bitter waiting on me to show up I have preserved their call and purpose for this time they are not famous people or well known in the earth but know this they are famous and well known in heaven and in hell when they get on their knees and pray the foundations of hell shake and they are the ones saith the Lord that the prophets have declared the people who know their God shall be strong and do great exploits the reason many of you have gone through great trials and sufferings I will now explain folks this is scary this is this is cultish I mean he knows things that God's not even told you of course he told you in the Bible but you know for some the Bible's not enough that's why they seek after people like this. Oh, got to hear a fresh word from God. God's doing a new thing. No, God is not doing a new thing. He's not done doing the old thing yet. After Satan is bound for eternity and there's no more sin, then God will begin a new thing. But there is no new thing until the Bible, all the prophecies have been fulfilled. Then God can do a new thing. Okay, these people who are seeking after signs and wonders, they are part of that evil and adulterous, perverse generation. That's who this man is leading the charge for right there. When I got ready to release nations and blessings in great favor to Abraham, I tested him because of what I was giving him was so great. I had to know that he loved me above all else, even above the blessings that had come from his loins. I had to know that I could trust him because what I was going to give him was greater than what any man had ever had. What I am now releasing to the body of Christ is not a portion of me. It's not a fragment of me, but in 2020, it is the beginning of the fullness of who I am. Previous moves of God in the past were known for a portion of who I am. Some were known as healing moves. Some were known as moves of miracles. Some were known as a time of revelation. Some were known as my presence, but not this time, saith the Lord. This move will not be a portion, but the move of the Lord will will be the fullness of the glory of God. I am now knowing this, that I have a remnant of people who have been broken and that I can trust them. And because they will not promote themselves and say, look at me, they will not get off track and become drunk with their own blessings. I'm going to give you, saith the Lord, more than you asked for. Folks, he cannot get away from the prosperity gospel. It's all they know supernatural signs and wonders and prosperity everything's going to be great y'all let's totally forget about the scripture that says if you lead a life of godliness you're going to be persecuted let's forget that let's forget about the end times being a time of birth pangs and the times of sorrows let's forget all that see that's what this whole uh new apostolic reformation movement is about is about the good time gospel everything's going to be great supernatural signs and wonders and guess what it's preparing them for the signs and wonders that the antichrist will show them this is exactly the plan don't doubt me the stronghold of abortion is going to be destroyed. The cry of the blood of innocent children has reached under heaven. Because the devil took my seed in the womb, I'm going to take the children of this generation that Satan thought was his. I'm going to save them and make them a voice in the earth. I thought earlier he said he was going to take these children with, you know, colored hair and tattoos and piercings and and do something with him because he was finally going to get the love he's desired now we hear that it's because satan uh was doing abortion that like he's going to rob something from satan this this is ridiculous I am also going to send freedom and deliverance to the gay and to the lesbian men and women that the modern church has failed because they had no power and no authority. Folks, he just said when it comes to the gay and lesbian uh, sin that this new church is going to do better because the old church had no power and authority. 
Are you serious? No power and authority? This is incredible. These young men, these women who have been bound, that the church is ostracized or else told them that it was all right, are new men and women that I love dearly and that I died for. What he has just said directly contradicts 1 Corinthians 1 through 13. You are not supposed to keep company with such people. Read it yourself. First. 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 13, and tell me if this man did not just preach against it. First, he says that the church ostracized homosexuals, means to exclude them. Then he says the church said, oh, no, it's all right. I mean, it, listen, the Bible is clear about tolerating sin in the pews, all right? You're not supposed to allow homosexuals, adulterers, and all these people to come to church and never preach against sin, the sin that they're doing. You do them no good. Jesus is not going to mysteriously jump on them and save them. What ends up happening is they come to church and they go to churches like Hillsong and Bethel and, and all these other uh, NAR churches where sin is not preached against. And what they do is they find acceptance, and then there's no reason for them to change. They sit there in the pews listening and going to hell thinking they're okay. And that's exactly where Satan wants them. He wants people to think they're okay so they will never strive to become okay. Out of the stronghold of homosexuality, I'm going to raise up powerful worship leaders and musicians and songwriters who will not have the smell of sin on them, saith the Lord. Mark my words, he already has someone in mind. There's already someone there, and this is all preparation. Mark my words. But there is a river of deliverance that's going to hit them in the name of the Lord. All that my prophets have prophesied is now going to come to pass. For all of those who said God's prophets have missed it, you will see it with your eyes. The prophecy is fulfilled, but you will not be a part of it. So I guess he's talking about with Timothy Dixon predicted Trump would be back in office before August of 2021. I guess when he prophesied that, and of course it didn't happen because now it's September, I guess those are the, the prophets he's talking about, the ones that, that have like zero accuracy. Those are the prophets that he's talking about. Now all of a sudden those prophecies are going to start coming true, and the people who didn't believe are not going to be part of it. What does that mean? Because I don't believe Timothy Dixon's a prophet. I don't think this guy's a prophet. But the prophecies are going to start coming true, and I'm not going to be part of it. What exactly does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. I'm going to expose leadership in the church who would not partake the gospel of, of the Lord Jesus Christ for all the pastors and leaders who would not put any value on my presence, watered down my message in their churches and offered only a form of God without any power so they could fill their pews and fill their pockets. saith the Lord, I'm going to take your congregations and I'm going to give them to true shepherds who have labored in obscurity who love sheep and smell like them i'm also going to stop blessing satellite churches that don't have a physical pastor in the sanctuary in times past i have but this last move of the lord saith god is going to demand that there be a physical pastor in the sanctuary this move of god i'm going to uncover and i'm going to expose the devil false prophets wolves in sheep's clothing both in the church and in the secular realm folks i don't know if i can even begin to believe this uh, first of all he is a false prophet folks like timothy dixon kenneth copeland benny hinn uh, rod parsley jim baker joel osteen all these people they just get more and more and more and this guy says that he's about to expose them well there's been people like me for months and months and months and years making these videos, exposing these people, 
showing anyone who will listen and who has any discernment what these people are all about. All of a sudden in 2020, God is now ready to expose them. I have placed an Elijah mantle and anointing in the earth now on chosen men to destroy the spirit of Jezebel that witchcraft and destroyed and tried to destroy this nation. That foul spirit, saith the Lord, that has permeated our government, permeated your colleges, and permeated your churches. Okay, so this was a 2020 prophecy. It is now middle September 2021, and you can still look this up yourself. University of Arkansas is offering classes on witchcraft. A lot of colleges are offering classes on witchcraft and the occult and the dark magic and all that. But uh, I, I guess, I don't know. I don't know why he said that God was going to be getting rid of all that when it's still very prevalent. In fact, it's growing. You know, shows like uh, Harry Potter are, are famous. They're almost magnetic. People love those shows. Folks, that's all witchcraft. It's all witchcraft. And, you know, the young people, parents, you let your young people just read these books and go to these movies and all that stuff, you're indoctrinating them. Well, all that has made it into the college. Right now, you can take courses in Harry Potter teaching you about the, the white magic and, and all this lesser than dark magic. Look it up. I did. It's all in the colleges. So do y'all remember this, this lady who got a staff and got Bill Johnson to get up on stage with these other people? And she slammed it down over and over and said that God told her they were supposed to chant to the devil, you shall not pass over and over and over. Do you remember? Look this up if you did not see this, how disgusting it is that this was brought into a church meeting. Now, they say this wasn't really done at Bethel Church, but that's Johnson back there. He was at a seminar or conference or wherever this was done, and she convinced all these people to do this. This is witchcraft. Witchcraft saith the Lord, the anointing of Elijah is going to destroy that foul demon, saith the Lord. So why is it the anointing of Elijah is going to break this stronghold and destroy this and not our King, Lord Jesus Christ? Why is it the, the, the anointing of Elijah? You know why? This sounds better. I am saying to you that I'm going to put a muzzle on the mouth of the dishonest media that's going to be silenced for the righteous. And just as Haman built gallows to hang Mordecai and died on them himself, so am I going to destroy evil politicians who have tried to impeach the man that I set in the White House. Yeah, I can tell Timothy Dixon watches this guy and actually tries to mimic this guy because he says the same thing. He says Mordecai and he had this prophecy about the gallows and how uh, the Italians were going to be uh, killed on their own gallows and it was all about because they interfered with Trump. And listen, if you start watching Timothy Dixon and this guy, they're almost like twin brothers. The things they say, the way they say it, what they say, I mean, it's, it's very suspicious, very suspicious. But here we go again with Trump. Okay, again, if God wanted Trump in office, Trump would be in office. No one stole an election from God. This did not take God by surprise. And like I said, this is September 2021. I am still waiting for this prophecy against the evil politicians who kept impeaching Trump and supposedly helped steal this election to pay for it. They've still not paid for it. Is this a real prophecy? Doesn't look like it. I am not setting men for a culture or a creed or a color, but I in heaven decreed that he sit there. And I also decree that he will be elected because that's who I have chosen. All right, folks, there you have it. In this was actually given in 2019 as a 2020 prophecy. I would suspect he gives it before 2020. Um, he said that God decreed Trump to sit in the White House, and he decreed he would win the election. And guess what? Trump is not in the White House, and he did not win the election. 
Now, you could say it was stolen, but then we're all the way back into the argument, did they really steal anything from God? So if Trump's not in the White House, but this false prophet says God decreed he was, who's wrong? Is it God, or is it this false prophet? So when God decrees something, it is an official order from God. No one can disobey that. It cannot be disobeyed. And you cannot say God changed his mind. If it is decreed by God, you might as well use the old adage, written in stone. Because that's what it is. I am God Almighty. I bow to no man. The earth is mine and has always been. In 2020, I am starting recovery in the earth that the church and all that belongs to me that the devil has stolen, saith the Lord. This is the beginning of a four-year harvest that's going to end at the end of 2024. It's going to end in the year 2024 because that's when Trump's second term was supposed to end. See, he's thinking he's got all this time under Trump, and it's going to be so great for the Christians. There's going to be great harvest coming in. There's, everything's going to be fine because Trump is going to be in office because God decreed it, and guess what? He was wrong. He is not a prophet. There's going to be a reversal of profits or, or companies for many in the next four years. Drug companies that have preyed on the weak are going to suffer. Not only because I'm going to release physical healing, but I'm also going to begin to heal people's hearts. So I guess in 2020, uh, one of the, uh, well, the biggest year of COVID, companies like Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, all their profits just went away. Yeah, he, he says that, that all the, these big pharma companies, are, the profits are going to be taken away because God's going to heal people. And then COVID breaks out. Do you know how much money they have gotten from COVID? It's in, it is staggering. You know, you may get a COVID shot if you want to take it. You may get it for free, but somebody's paying for it. Somebody's paying Moderna. Somebody's paying Pfizer. Someone's paying Johnson & Johnson. Not according to the privacy this man just gave. The profits were supposed to be taken from him in 2020. And I'm coming after the demon of depression that has watched over this nation. And I'm going to give men and women the joy of the Lord. As a lion roars over his prey, so now you will hear the lion of Judah roar over the wicked in this triumphant spirit. Sports is going to see a huge decline in attendance because people are going to lose interest in them. This is my judgment on sports because they have dishonored Sundays and they have turned it into an idol and they stop people from coming to worship on Sundays. God says this was my day and not theirs and I'm taking it back. Yeah, he predicted the same thing in 2018 and if you look in the past video I made, you see where it was on a decline from like 2015 all the way down to 16 and 17 he gave the prophecy of 18, and it shot back up. It's like the, the chart doesn't even care what this prophet said. Sports attendance shot back up in the NFL. Now, he says that he's taken away the, the, the money from sports. He doesn't just say NFL, but he says because they, it made it where people didn't go to church. Well, folks, that's the people's problem. That's the people who don't want to go to church. That's not the NFL's problem. Let's just be honest. That's a matter of the condition of the heart of the people who are, would rather watch the NFL than go to church. He's blaming the wrong person. Not only that, sports is one of the biggest idols we have. And if church attendance in 2020 was down because of COVID, guess where they ran to? They ran to sports. It's one of the biggest idols. Sports, pornography, the internet, money, all these different things took the place of church when the churches got shut down in 2020. How bad could this prophet miss this? 
Hallelujah. This is the spirit of the Lord. I am also, saith the Lord, going to deal with Hollywood, who has bossed my name. I am going to judge them. And the weapons of the secular world have been the ability to pass laws in Congress against righteousness. But know this, I am removing men who won't stand up for righteousness in government. And I am raising up a majority in government who will. Folks, this is another disastrous prophecy this man just uttered. He said that he was going to bring, God was going to bring a majority of righteousness in politics. Folks, we lost more seats in the House. We lost the Senate pretty much because now it's an even split and Vice President Harris is the deciding vote. We lost the White House. What is he talking about? We lost almost everything in the 2020 election. But this man said it was all going to be great. The majority of righteousness was going to come in. God was going to take out the unrighteous out of our government. Folks, we can look back and see this man has zero accuracy. Please tell me you have some discernment and you can see this. 2020 will be remembered as the year of purifying both in the church and in the nation. The year 2020 was supposed to be the year remembered for, for purifying the church and the nation. That's what he said, purifying the church and the nation. Folks, is your nation purified? Because I don't see it. I see lawlessness everywhere. You can't find it out west because Antifa and Black Lives Matter is tearing everything up in 2020. You can't see it in the Congress and the Senate or the Senate and the House because that's all given over to the Democrats. Hunter Biden, no one's going to enforce anything on Hunter Biden. No one's going to enforce the law on anyone. Not while they're in charge. Is that really purification? I don't see it. But see, he thought Trump was going to be in office. He thought we were going to get control of the Senate and the, and the House, and Trump would have the White House. And then things are going to happen. See, he's NAR. And he knows that under their doctrine, uh, the what do you call it, the Kingdom Now or Dominion Doctrine, that the seven mountains, which includes politics and government, that has to be taken over by Christians. Look up the seven mountains. Uh, uh, dominion theology. You'll see what he believes, that all these different areas have to be taken over by Christians in order for Jesus to come back. That is poor theology. It's been proven wrong over and over, but it's made a comeback. It's now a new name, New Apostolic Reformation. All it is is Kingdom Now theology, Dominion theology. That's what he believes. That's what he thought was going to happen, and it didn't. I'm going to send fire, saith the Lord, to this nation and to the church, and I'm going to purify her. Okay, so the fire was going to come, and it was going to purify the church in 2020. Folks, let me tell you what happened in 2020. A lot of small churches who were preaching the gospel and seeing souls saved got shut down. They lost the churches because of lack of income. But let me tell you who didn't lose their church. Kenneth Copeland didn't lose his church. Jesse Duplantis didn't lose his church. Jim Baker didn't lose his TV show. Todd White didn't lose his church. Bill Johnson didn't lose his church. All these NAR false, uh, uh, false doctrine churches, they actually grew by leaps and bounds during this time. And you had all the small churches who were really doing the work, preaching the gospel. Those are the ones that got shut down. A 180 degree opposite of what this man said was going to happen. I am taking from the wicked uh, that which they have said was ours, uh, and I'm giving it to the righteous, saith the Lord. Said the same thing in the 2018 prophecy, and it did not happen. But see, it's what the congregation wants to hear. He's tickling their ears. They want to hear that the evil is about to lose everything. And those who have been praying and have been faithful are about to get everything. That's what this man said was going to happen in 2018. I haven't seen it happen. I, I, hey, look, ain't no evil people giving me their cars or their houses or their businesses. Evil people still got their stuff. All right, because it rains on the just and the unjust. The evil prosper because we prosper. 
the blessings of God overflows off of us onto them. You know, the wheat and the tare grow together. This man is not a prophet. I am also going to be connecting uh, men and women in the spirit in the church uh, that have never met each other. And I'm going to cause you to begin to form relationships uh, with people that you've never met uh, in the body of Christ. Uh, for the root system of the church is coming out of the ground. Uh, and I am raising up a church, hallelujah, whose leaves shall be for the healing of the nations. Folks, he forgets that 10, 15, 20 minutes ago, he said that this revival was not going to be from church people. It was going to be from lost people. He's going completely opposite of what he said earlier. Now he's talking about church folks making relationships and making it happen. But earlier he said no, it was going to be people with different colored hair and mohawks and tattoos and body piercings that were going to be the ones in charge of the church. This is how confused he is. When you start tickling the ears, you forget what you say, and you just try to wow the crowd for, a, for an amen or a hallelujah. I am also resurrecting ministries and gifts in people that have been dormant or that the church has refused to use. Men and women that sometimes through failure disqualified themselves, but the gift still burned in them. Know this, saith God, because you repented, and I'm taking you through the process. My anointing on you is still strong. I say to thee that this end time church is going to cast out demons. They're going to raise the dead. They're going to walk in hospitals, saith the Lord and they're going to lay hands on the sick and by the scores they shall get up and begin to walk out of the house of God walk out of the house of God walk out of the house of God folks he just went from a church that's going to go in the hospitals and raise the dead and heal the sick to those who are going to walk out of the house of God he said it you heard it to your children uh, that education told them that God uh, did not live uh, I am invading your colleges uh, I'm going to deal with your professors uh, who have challenged me uh, and said I am not real uh, and that I do not exist uh, I'm going to show up in your college rooms uh, I'm going to release the baptism uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, upon men and women across that I'm going to lift up the church. So be encouraged, saith God, the best is yet to come. Hold on, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Yeah, what came was COVID, and all the churches were shut down. That, that's what actually came. I want you to put your hand on your heart. I want to pray over you before I sit down. Now, Lord, I pray a spirit of blessing upon the sons and daughters who are in this building. And by the authority of the Holy Ghost, I plead the blood over this congregation tonight in Jesus' name. And I bind you, devil, in the name of Jesus. Folks, when you see people do what he just did, devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus, he has no idea what those verses meant. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. He has no idea. Think about it. This man in 2019, coming to 2020, bound the devil. Well, how did he get loose? These people do this all the time. We bind the devil. Well, if you bound him, we got nothing to worry about. How did he get free? He unbound himself? Or do you misinterpret that scripture? This is a preacher, a pastor, a so-called prophet, and he can't gather that concept? He can't find out what the context of those verses, what it means? This is awful. For those of you that are tithers, may God so bless you that you no longer have a mortgage payment, but you are debt free in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I guess if you're not a tither, he doesn't want you to be debt-free. This is ridiculous. First of all, let's get something straight. There is no tithe mandate in the New Testament. Let's cover this again. This is something that Abram did before he was even Abraham. 
He was not in covenant with God when he found Jeremiah and gave him a tenth of the spoils of war. Then about 435 years later, after he became Abraham, it made it into the law, okay? The rabbinical law, the Jewish law. <clears throat> now, if you look at it, the only people who were supposed to tithe were farmers. If you were a blacksmith or a carpenter, you were not required to tithe because you were to, you were to tithe on your fruits and vegetables, okay? If you were a worker, you didn't tithe on that. You didn't tithe money. So this whole thing about tithing is ridiculous and unsupported for the New Testament. Now, the New Testament does say that you are supposed to give from your heart, and we're supposed to do that. You give as the Lord leads you to give. But there is no obligatory tithe, which means a tenth. There is no tithe command in the New Testament. So if you wanted to follow the tithe in the old law, okay, if you want to go back to that ball and chain that you can't possibly fulfill, you have to give a tenth of what you got from the spoils of war or you have to be a farmer. No one else, according to the law, was to be tithing. But you know what? He needs a paycheck. So if you're giving him a paycheck, by God, he's going to pray that you don't have a mortgage. Everybody else, forget you. You, you just keep paying your mortgage. You just keep going along because you're not giving. Folks, this is wrong. This is so wrong. All right, folks, there it is. Kent Christmas 2020 prophecy. Uh, 2018 was a disaster prophecy for him. 2020 was even worse. I think we can see that this man is not a prophet. He is not hearing from God. I mean, he he said that uh, basically uh, Washington was going to, you know, God was going to clean house and put righteous men in. And we end up losing the Senate and the uh, House and the presidency. Um, I mean, come on, you know, this, this is, this is ridiculous. Uh, and that's just the way I see it. So I'm out of here. I got to go find an aspirin. Thank you for stopping by the Alabama Woodsman. I hope you visit again soon.